So today I'm gonna to share 30 extreme but practical frugal living tips that are very easy to do. So these are all tips that come from my own personal experience of saving money and living more frugally. And then also I have some tips on how I handled bigger expenses. So I'll share my experiences with that too. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. 30 extreme frugal living tips. Number one, renegotiate monthly bills. This is one of my favorites because it's an easy place to start and any of us can do it. If you have one hour to spare, you could save hundreds of dollars a year, if not thousands of dollars per year. I spent one hour on the phone and then customer service chats. I called up our car insurance, our cell phone service provider and our internet provider. So on those three bills, the discount I was able to get added up to $100 per month, which is $1,200 per year of savings. Now, if you didn't know that you could contact your service providers and get your bill lowered, you might be wondering, how do I go about this? Like exactly what do I say? So when I wanna get a bill lowered, all I do when I call up, I get them on the phone, I just say, hi, I'm hoping you can help me. I need to lower our monthly bill. Do you have any plans or promotional offers available for longtime customers? And they take it from there. They also will sometimes have a loyalty department, which is a team of people that are meant to keep customers. Like that's their goal is to keep the customer. So if they have any better plans, or maybe you're on an older outdated plan, like a cell phone plan or something that you've had for five years, they might have an updated newer plan. And so you might go back and forth with them a little bit just to see what you can get the bill lowered to, you know, if they come back with another offer maybe come back again if it's not low enough and just say, is there anything else I can do? Like, is there a better plan? Or maybe they'll check like what type of plan you're currently on and maybe you don't need everything. Maybe you're not using all of what that plan entails. I'd recommend doing this with companies that have competition where they don't want you leaving and giving your business to their competitor. You know, they it's their goal to keep their customer. I, I, w I have not ever tried this with uh, utility companies. I don't think it would work with them. You know, if, they're, if it's like one, an electric company that you're not going anywhere and they know that but at least with our utilities we we have more control over what we spend each month by other things that we can do around the house you know like using less electricity can save us on money right so anyway those are kind of the, the start to save on bills so that was one hour of time that i spent to save twelve hundred dollars per year and it was so worth it Number two, no spin challenges. It is so much fun to make a game out of not spending money and then all the money you save during that period is like the reward at the end of it. It's so much fun and you can do it for however long you want, whatever time period you want where you cut out all non-essential purchases. It could be for one month, so just 30 days, or some people do it for an entire year or they have no buys for specific types of items that they don't wanna buy any of during that time period. So you could do that also. I like the no spin challenge specifically because I, there's a lot of times where I just don't want anything new coming into the house. Or you can shrink that amount of time and just do it for one week. That would be an easy place to start if you haven't done no spin challenges before and you just want to kind of dip your toe in and see how it feels, kind of get you in the habit. It sort of builds up the habit of getting used to not going out and spending money or going online and spending money. So you could do it for one week or you could even do it for weekends, you know, just a weekend at a time here and there until you get more in the habit. Number three, pay with cash. This sounds really extreme now that I'm saying this because I almost never see anyone paying with cash anymore. Like everyone is swiping cards and I know it's so easy to do. It's so convenient. Now you might've heard this before, but the thing is when we swipe a card, we don't feel the pain of our hard earned money leaving us. But when we have to pay with cash and we physically have all that money in our hand and we're watching it leave, we feel that it's more visceral. Like we really feel our hard earned money leaving us and then our empty. <laughs> empty hand afterwards. So it really makes you think more about how much money you're spending. And when you have that cash in your hand, you're able to think more about how many hours it actually took you to make that amount. And you're less likely to let it all slip away out of your hand <laughs> quite so quickly as it is when you're just, oh, swipe a card. It's so easy to swipe a card and you don't think anything of it, right? Until you check your bank account and you're like, oh, wow, that that got down there in a hurry, didn't it? Number four, I buy our furniture secondhand at a fraction of the cost of new furniture. I rarely ever buy new furniture. There are certain cases where I've gone to Ikea and purchased something new, but most of our, our pieces have been purchased secondhand, either at estate sales, garage sales, or Craigslist. For example, we have this coffee table and side table set that I got on Craigslist a while back for $75, and it's a vintage split reed bamboo set. I love the natural look in the house, and so 
that's why I have like a lot of wood pieces but mixed with white to keep everything light and bright in here. And like this white shelf behind me, it's an arched shelf. I love that shelf so much and it really brightens up our corner. And that was $66 at an estate sale shop. And even small pieces of furniture like plant stands, I always find those at really good prices at estate sales. Number five, we buy our household appliances secondhand. Instead of purchasing them new, you can find them used at a fraction of the cost of what they are new. So like our washer and dryer, for example, I bought those at an estate sale. I was actually at the estate sale, it was a little bit later in the morning. And so I was like, hmm, I wonder if they would take a little bit less. So I actually negotiated on them. So they were marked at $200 a piece, so it would be $400 for the set. It was more than I'd planned to pay for a washer dryer set though. So I actually went and negotiated. I quietly took one of the owners of the estate sale company aside and I said, hey, you know that washer and dryer set? I'd be willing to pay $200 cash if you don't sell it by the end of the day. You know, and I was going to let him know, give him my number, and I'd come back and get it. And instead, he was just like right there on the spot. It's yours. You know, yes. You want to load it up? Here, let's let's do it right now. So we got it the set. Instead of $400, we got it for $200. So it was half price. But with that said, just know that there are right ways to go about negotiating, and there's lots and lots of wrong ways <laughs> to go about negotiations um, in, in my business, in my trade that I work in. So gemstones, jewelry, all of that, the business to business end of it is all negotiations. And I'm on both sides of it all the time for the past 20 years, which I love. I love the art of negotiating, but you do have to be able to read a situation and you have to read people. But if you guys want tips on negotiating successfully, I can do that in a separate video. But I don't wanna to spend too much time on that here though, because we have lots more to talk about. So let's get on to number six. Number six, we intentionally choose to not have a TV. I haven't owned a TV in 20 years and I don't miss it a bit. Not paying for TVs, cable TV, streaming services, uh, satellite dishes, channel subscriptions. If I was to just throw a number at it, I'll just, I'll just say, you know, $100. So say it saves us $100 per month. It doesn't sound like much, right? Until you compound it over time. So $100 per month is $1,200 per year. And in 20 years, that's $24,000 that we've saved by not having a TV. But wait, we didn't include a TV. So let's just say we have a $1,000 TV you know, over a 20 year period. So that's $25,000 saved by not spending money on this $100 a month bill plus the TV set. Also not being exposed to TV advertisements saves us even more money. If we think about it this way, advertising that doesn't reach you can't influence you to give up your money. So you save even more. Number seven, I only wash my laundry in cold water. I never use the hot or warm. I read that it saves on energy and your utility bill by not using the hot water because it costs more to run the washing machine. That's where most of the energy is spent when running a washing machine is to heat the water. Number eight, use less laundry detergent. I always use just a tiny bit of laundry detergent because a lot of our laundry soaps today are very concentrated anyway. And so we use Costco, uh, the Kirkland Free and Clear. And so when I use that, I only fill it up like the, to the first line. It's plenty of soap to get your clothes clean. It doesn't take very much. It's really the agitation cycle in our washing machine that does most of the work. And laundry soap isn't cheap. So if you're able to cut back on the amount you're using each load, you're able to stretch how many loads you can get out of that one container of laundry soap. So it'll save you money in the long run. Number nine, I wear my clothes more than once before washing. I actually try to wear them as many times as possible. So usually I can wear like the same shirt or shorts or whatever for at least a few days before having to wash them. So I extend that time in between washing my clothes, which also helps extend the life of my clothes too, because they're not getting worn out as fast. Now Michael's work clothes, that's a different story. He has to wash his, you know, so there's certain cases where you do have to wash them after a single use. Number 10, we hang dry all of our clothes instead of using the dryer. So we only use the dryer if we're doing towels or sheets. Otherwise we have a laundry rack in our laundry room and that also helps extend the life of our clothes so they don't get worn out as fast because drying them all the time can start to break down fibers in the clothing and make them wear out faster. It also takes up energy. It costs a lot to run the dryer. Number 11, keep a minimalist closet. I don't buy clothes if I don't need them. If I do need them, then I have them on a list. I plan my purchases. That's actually another number that's going to be coming up, plan purchases. But I really like to make sure that I don't overstuff my closet the way that I used to. I used to do that. I would go to thrift stores and I would think, oh, what a great deal. Look at all these clothes you can get. And I would come home with too many clothes and most of them I wouldn't end up wearing very often. So then I just ended up with a closet stuffed full of clothes and half of them I didn't even wear. I also found that saving up and going for the better quality item versus the cheaper item has been the better deal and saves me more money, even if it 
cost a little bit more. It was a better quality. I found those last much longer and I get way more value out of those items. Cost is different than value. We want to go after value, not just the cheap cost of an item. Because what if you only wore that cheap item a couple of times, but you wore the higher quality item that maybe cost a little bit more, but you were able to wear that like a hundred times. <laughs> you get way more value from that better quality item. So instead of having 10 fast fashion items, I just save up and invest in one nice quality piece. And I find that that has worked out and saved me a lot of money compared to the way I used to shop for clothes. Number 12, I wash my hair less often, every three days. And so that way it saves me money because I'm using less hair product like shampoo, conditioner, heat protectant. I don't buy any other hair products. So I save money by using less products so I don't have to buy it as often. And also it helps minimize damage and dryness from overwashing. And it also means that I only have to style my hair once every three days right after washing it. Number 13, also to save money on shampoo and conditioner, body wash, face wash, I intentionally use less. And then as I'm using it, I let it dilute with water. So like if I'm in the shower, I let the shampoo, you know, just have extra water in it or my hair have extra water before adding it in there. And it just spreads it out easier and I'm able to use less product. And that way I'm not going through product too quickly or faster than I need to, and then having to buy it more often. Also, I don't buy the small bottles of shampoo and conditioner. I go with the bigger bulk size. So that saves money. You can always check the price per ounce and compare the price. And I use Pureology in the big purple bottles. So I buy it at Ulta and they always have sales going on or discounts or they're sending coupons in the mail. So I basically ignore the rest of the store when I go in there. I don't go and like shop around for things. I just go there with my coupon on a mission to restock my shampoo and conditioner and you can save like 20 percent a lot of the time and they also have sales on the the large size shampoo and conditioners quite often throughout the year so i always wait for the sale before i go and buy it and it saves a bunch of money number 14 cut your own hair or have a friend or family member cut it for you as far as i can remember i've always cut my own hair so i always kept my hair long i was always doing just trims i never did any like major haircuts or anything nothing fancy that's for sure just trims throughout my whole life and now I cut Michael's hair too and he likes his hair pretty short so it would be expensive to go get his hair cut all the time if we we're getting it done out at a salon or something or a, a barber shop so that's a huge way to save money is getting your hair cut at home or having a friend or family member do it for you number 15 I love meal planning to save on groceries and it's really simple to start meal planning all you do is make a list of your favorite meals and make sure to include a lot of fast and easy meals to make and so when you're planning your week and what you're gonna be having pick out a bunch of those meals have some fast and easy ones thrown in there too and you don't have to plan like every single like meal for every day I don't I don't do it that way I just do like a kind of a rough outline like okay I think I kind of feel like having these meals this week sometime during the week and I just make sure that when I go grocery shopping my my grocery list I already have that like in the notes section of my phone I keep an ongoing grocery list so each of my meals that I'm gonna be making that week I have all of the ingredients like everything I need to make that meal and so so I just like check it off as I'm in the grocery store. That way during the week, you know what you're gonna be making and you're not missing any ingredients because you already bought them at the grocery store. Everything is really organized. Meal planning is just a way to add some structure to your week. And so that way you don't have to guess what you're gonna be having at the last minute and not have any sort of plan or not have some good wholesome food at home for you. Instead, you might be like, oh shoot, we don't have ingredients for this and that, let's just do takeout. You know, something like that. So it saves you from those moments. Number 16, include meatless meals and dairyless days. It saves a bunch of money. Plant-based meals are usually less expensive than the alternative. And I know for us, it saved us a lot of money. It also saved my health because I was having some health problems from dairy specifically. And if you're into high protein, don't worry, you're not going to be missing out on any protein. There's tons of protein sources from plants in a plant-based diet. So I like to eat really simple meals. I don't like to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. There's other things that I would rather be doing, but I do love food and grocery shopping and saving money on groceries, but I also want the most nutrient bang for my caloric buck. So I want to eat the most vibrant, healthy, living foods as possible, but I also want to save money as much as possible too. Number 17, we don't buy or cook with oil, which saves me also from not having to clean greasy pots and pans, but it also saves my health because it was affecting my health. When I was eating anything that contained oil or anything that was greasy, it would affect my skin really bad. I would get a lot of inflammation and even like dandruff 
in my hair. I always thought that I had naturally oily skin, but when I stopped eating anything that contained oil, my skin actually totally normalized and balanced out. And those were the good oils, like the extra virgin olive oil, the avocado oil for cooking. And it was not, not cheap to buy those oils. So we were spending quite a lot each time we bought a bottle of oil. So once I realized you don't even have to cook with oil, that you can actually cook with water. Like I cook any of my dishes or stir fries or anything just with water and just takes a little bit. So now I don't have to clean greasy pots and pans and I don't have to worry about triggering inflammation in my body, upsetting my skin balance. And also it saves us a bunch of money because now I'm not spending money on buying those expensive oils or any oil at all anymore. Number 18, drink water instead of store-bought juices, sodas, energy drinks. We know those things are not going to be great for our health and water is always going to be the best choice. And these store-bought beverages in cans and bottles, they're expensive. It's so much cheaper to just drink water. And once your taste buds get used to that, it tastes really good if you can get hold of some good water or get a filter if you don't have great water. Like we have really hard water here, but we just pay like 29 cents. We go out to natural grocers and we get their water, the reverse osmosis. It's really good and it tastes delicious. And that's like my favorite beverage to have. That's all I drink during the day, other than like my homemade smoothies or occasionally if I make a juice or something at home. Number 19, eat at home. It's so much cheaper than going out to restaurants or, I mean, if you think about it, two people going out to a restaurant could cost the same as an entire week of groceries. We also never do takeout, so we never stop somewhere on our way home and bring, you know, bring restaurant food home to the house. We never do that at all. We save eating out for special occasions only. And when we do want to have a nice meal from a restaurant, we would rather go out to the restaurant and have that whole experience than doing takeout and eating at home. Like if I'm gonna eat at home, I'd rather just eat my own food. So it saves money by not eating out. Number 20, preventative healthcare. Make it a priority. It's my priority every day to do everything I can for my health and to not depend on the medical system later on. I want quality of life later on. I don't wanna to have to be paying the pharmaceutical companies for all kinds of medications. I do not want that in my future. So I wanna do everything I can now while I'm in control and health it really is our responsibility. It's not the responsibility of a doctor or the medical system. We gotta do everything that we can to take care of ourselves, to take care of our body and our mind. It's investing in our health with fresh anti-inflammatory whole foods grown from the earth. It's getting our exercise in that day. It's taking care of our body and mind every way that we can each day by all the little choices we make. And yes, preventative healthcare takes discipline, consistency, and self-respect, but it's so worth it. And we each have the choice. And that's what we want to think about is what kind of future do we want? And what can we do today to reflect that? I always think of it this way. We can pay the farmer or we can pay big pharma. Which one do we want? Pay the farmer now or pay big pharma later? I would rather pay the farmer and eat really good food and take care of my body as much as possible. We can't prevent everything, but we can at least do our very best to prevent as much as possible. And the doctors in the medical system can keep you alive, but we don't wanna just have a long life. We wanna have quality of life for as long as possible. Number 21, dental work. Going to the dentist is expensive. So this is how I handled one of my major expenses that I had to do some years ago. So when I was young and a teenager, I was not eating a good diet. I was eating a lot of sugary items and drinking a lot of soda and it really messed up my teeth. So I had a lot of dental work that I needed to get done after having grown up eating junk food. <laughs> junk food, sugary baked goods, donuts, cookies, you name it, I ate it. So all of that stuff led up to having a a lot of dental work and cavities that I needed filled and fixed and I had also impacted wisdom teeth. So even though I quit eating that way, I still needed the dental work to fix the problems that I'd caused from the diet I used to eat. So fast forward to 2013, Michael and I started talking about going overseas and I got the idea to do dental tourism. So that's what I decided to do. We were gonna combine going on this uh, overseas backpacking trip. So we went to Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, India, and I wanted to take care of my dental work while we were in Thailand in Chiang Mai. And that's exactly what I did. I had $5,000 worth of dental work done for less than $500. And yes, I did combine getting the dental work done with a trip. So the trip did cost us money, but we were on a pretty shoestring budget. We were backpacking through all of the countries. And so, I mean, we weren't spending a lot of money. Like we were spending less than what it costs to live 
like where like in Maui, like where we were and like our bills, you know, everything, rent and everything, like we were living on less while we were traveling. So not spending that five thousand dollars on getting the dental work done is what allowed me to be able to get my Invisalign started. So I was able to take that money instead and put it into my Invisalign. If I ever have any more dental work, like any major dental work that needs to get done, I wouldn't hesitate to go to Chiang Mai, Thailand again and have it all done there. They do really good work if you find a good dentist and there's lots of reviews online. So you can always check them out in advance, which is what I did before going there. Number 22, preventative dental care. Just like preventative health care, we want to be doing everything in our power every day to take care of our teeth so we don't need to pay for outrageously priced dental care. So I brush my teeth two to three times a day with a pea-sized amount of toothpaste. It only takes a little bit. I know on commercials they show like this big old snake of toothpaste on the brush. That's too much. They're actually overdoing it. They want us to use up more toothpaste than we actually need. It only takes a pea-sized amount of toothpaste and even then like at the end when the tube is almost gone I still cut it open and try to get any little bit out and that way I don't waste any toothpaste. And I floss every day and after meals if I especially if I feel anything getting caught in my teeth or something I, I definitely floss right after that and get a water pick. If you don't have a water pick yet, it's worth investing in it. I didn't have one for a long time, but oh my gosh, once I finally got one, they are the best things ever. It's literally just you flossing with water. It's amazing. It has this little jet of water and there's different attachments you can use and it's just clean water, just cleaning your teeth and around your gums and in between your teeth and everything. And even after like eating a fruit meal or something, if I don't want fruit acids like on my teeth, I will go use my water pick and just spray my teeth, you know, because they say you, you might not want to brush after eating certain foods because it can be abrasive to your teeth or harsh on your teeth. So instead of brushing your teeth right after a meal like that, you can just use the water pick and just spray them. Just rinse them off and it's amazing. Best at-home dental tool for preventative dental care ever. And a big part of preventative dental care is not eating the foods that give us dental problems in the first place. So I cut out all the junk food, no more junk food for me. And now I eat mineral rich foods like leafy greens, vegetables, bitter greens, all the things that are going to be helpful to your teeth, the blood flow around the gums, healthy for the teeth enamel. So all of the mineral rich foods. So every day I make sure to get my mineral rich greens in either in a big salad or a big green smoothie. Number 23, we're child free and loving it. Both Michael and I made this decision early on before we ever met each other. We did not want to have kids, neither of us. But yeah, people used to tell me all the time, oh, you'll change your mind. No, no, I won't. It's a no for me. <laughs> I think we should normalize not wanting to have kids, you know, like being child free is a normal feeling, like not wanting to get into that. It's a major life altering decision to have kids, you know, like I don't think it should be uh, like pushed on anybody, <laughs> that's for sure. So for us, Michael and I, we are child free and very happy about it. Number 24, we don't have pets. And this is only a temporary choice right now because I love animals. I want all the fur babies, trust me. I want all the rabbits, all the chinchillas, all the prairie dogs. Uh, Michael wants the prairie dogs too. I would have a couple burrows in the backyard. I love animals. They're some of my favorite people on the planet, but it's not in my budget right now, especially because not only the food or, you know, care or taking it to the vet, you know, any expenses that are involved with the animal directly, but also our housing cost would go up too. Um, like the place we're renting right now would charge more per month if we had a pet. And also they charge a pet deposit. And so I think the rent would go up a couple hundred dollars a month if I recall correctly. As wonderful as pets are, sometimes they're not in the budget. Number 25, swap impulse buys for planned purchases. I keep a list on my phone of items that I plan to get and then I save up for those items. And be very specific with your list. So for example, like I have a light neutral fleece for winter on my list. So that's as specific as I can be and it's replacing an item that I wore out and I, I want to replace it because it's something that I wear all the time every winter. Just be as specific as possible and that way you know exactly what you're after and it will help you avoid impulse buys and distractions. And remember, impulse buys are like cravings. If we don't act on them in the moment and we let them pass, often the desire to have the thing goes away. And some of you are probably already familiar with sinking funds and cash stuffing. It's like where you have a set of envelopes, say, for example, and any items or things that you plan to do or get during the year, you have an envelope for that item and you save throughout the year. So you already have like little mini savings account essentially with each envelope for a specific purpose during the year. So say you're wanting to get your hair 
dinner done during the year. So you have one for your salon visits or you have one for clothing or you know whatever it is that you're saving for during the year. So you can create your sinking funds any way you want and you can use them for whatever purpose. You could use it for car repairs or any bills that you have, utility bills, anything. And cash stuffing is just when you add money to your envelopes or your little savings accounts. Number 26, we prefer to buy used vehicles versus new vehicles. The reason for this is I'm not a fan of car payments. If I can avoid having a car payment and just pay cash for a vehicle, I prefer doing that. My first two cars I paid cash for and they were very inexpensive back in the day. It was when I first moved out to Maui. Uh, I had actually a Toyota Tercel hatchback was my first vehicle I bought for $500. And then a couple years later, I bought another Toyota Tercel that was $700. And so those two cars together bought me five years of no car payments. So imagine if you don't have a car payment, how much money you'd be able to save. If you did pretend like you had a car payment still and you just put that money away into savings and then when you needed to buy another car in the future, you already had a savings built up for that. Now there's nothing wrong with buying a new car if you have the money and that's the car you want, go for it. My third vehicle was a new car. I bought a brand new Toyota Tundra V8 4x4 long bed truck and I love that truck. I still have it today. It's the truck that Michael and I share. We've been sharing that one vehicle for the past 15 years. It's got over 250,000 miles on it right now, but it's been an awesome vehicle. Even if it was to die tomorrow, it would have still been worth it. I bought it for 21,000 at the time in 2005. And yeah, it's, I've been driving it ever since. And I also worked really hard to pay it off as fast as possible, even though I did finance it. I did put down a down payment and I made car payments. And having just one vehicle means we're able to save money on other things like paying for car insurance, gas, car repairs, registration. So all of those things, we only had to pay for one vehicle instead of two. So it saved us money there over the years too. But yeah, 250,000 miles, our truck is getting, it's getting up there in age. So eventually we are gonna have to buy another truck because Michael works, he needs a truck, he needs a long bed truck for work. So we're looking right now and we're gonna be buying used because I don't want crazy car payments. Number 27, I don't play with debt, I pay with cash. If I can't pay cash, I can't afford it, and so I don't buy it. I don't use credit cards, I don't have credit cards, and I don't accept offers to sign up for in-store credit cards, you know, like from any little store. They're always like offering you at the cashier checkout, you know, oh, save 10% today if you sign up for our in-store credit card. Nope, no thanks, it's a no for me. <laughs> I always turn that down right away, I have no interest in that. Aside from the truck that I bought new and the idea of having a mortgage one day in the future, I don't finance things. For example, things like iPhones, electronics, appliances, furniture. Michael does have one credit card, but it's actually his and his father's. And so they kind of use it and save it for an emergency or something where you need to book a reservation and that's the only option to book with. I followed Dave Ramsey for a long time and I know that he says no credit cards are needed for anything that you do. But I have found there's been certain cases where we've needed to book reservations for something, you know, usually having to do with travel or a rental car or something, and they prefer a credit card. Uh, and they don't let you pay cash or anything. And I think they might take a debit card, but then they have like a huge hold that they put on your account. I don't know, we've been in certain scenarios where it's easier to have a credit card just to take the reservation and then we pay cash afterwards or we pay with our debit card afterwards. Otherwise, I prefer to be credit card free. Number 28, we don't buy into the consumerism of holidays. I don't spend any money on seasonal decor, holiday decor. We don't celebrate traditional holidays and it saves us a lot of money to not buy into all of the consumerism that's involved with every holiday that comes up. And it feels like the consumerism is pushed on us so much that it's almost like to make you feel guilty if you don't do these things or you don't gift people all this stuff and you're not out buying all of these things or buying flowers and chocolates on Valentine's Day. It's like all of this pressure that's put on us that's only based on consumerism and getting us to buy, buy, buy constantly. We celebrate our anniversary, but there's never pressure or expectations to buy gifts and things. We value experiences and quality time together and with family more than material things. We just focus on enjoying each other's company and having good meals together. Number 29, we don't buy into the consumerism of life events. For example, weddings or funerals. 
pick any life event, fill in the blank. So there's this over the top kind of thing. It's like the bigger it is, the better it is. And I don't buy into that at all. I would say we had a minimalist wedding. It's about as minimalist as you could get. So in July, 2004, Michael and I got married on the beach in Maui. Michael wore his cargo shorts, no top. I wore my bikini and it was just us and the judge. So just the three of us and the judge is also who took our pictures, our wedding pictures. So we went through the ceremony, we whispered our vows to each other and we did, you know, set our I do's and it was beautiful. We got married barefoot on the beach in Maui, warm sand on your feet, beautiful sunshine, beautiful day in Maui, palms swaying in the breeze. It was gorgeous and it was just us. Very private, you know, the judge left right afterwards. We played on the beach for a while and then we went out to breakfast. It was, it was the best. And the total cost that we spent on our wedding was $60. It was just the cost of the marriage license. My wedding ring was the most expensive thing that we bought and that was $500. And we actually bought it from an actual retail jewelry storefront. I can't remember the name of it, but it was in Queen Kaumanu Center out in Maui. We had gone to a couple different jewelry stores in there and ended up settling on this one because it was really simple. It was just a band of diamonds. And I love my ring, but I wasn't working in the jewelry trade back then. So that's why I went to a retail storefront. But now I would absolutely never do that. I would not do that the same way. I would actually go to other companies, specialty companies um, who you meet at the gym shows. Like if you go to the gym shows, you'll find all kinds of companies. And that's what I would recommend if you're buying an engagement ring or a stone, like I would buy a stone separate and then have a custom setting made. That's how I would do it nowadays. But um, yeah, at, at the time I didn't know any better. I was young and you know, I, I didn't get into the business world yet of the gyms and jewelry. But now, now that I know better, that's what I would recommend anyone do. You get way more for your money and saves you a ton. For me, the idea of spending thousands on an extravagant wedding and then hundreds, if not thousands more on a wedding dress that you only wear once, walking down an aisle, standing up there in front of a crowd, saying your vows in front of everyone, being the center of attention as the bride, just thinking about that is giving me anxiety. My nervous system would be contemplating a panic attack. Yeah, that would be a no for me. I would not be into that at all. That would not be like a dream wedding for me. That would be more like a nightmare. I would not be having a good time uh, going through that. Now for us, we wanted to have our wedding that way because that's what we wanted. But the result of that, the benefit of that was also that we saved a ton of money and we didn't have to spend thousands in a single day for a one day event. Oh, and our honeymoon was a staycation on Maui. So we didn't go anywhere for it. We didn't stay at a hotel or anything. We stayed home for our honeymoon and it was awesome. And then also whenever we have anniversaries, we still are, we still joke with each other like, oh, let's go on our honeymoon because we didn't actually take a honeymoon. So now our honeymoon is like endless. It's limitless. Like we have all kinds of honeymoons <laughs> throughout the years, going places and traveling. Number 30, live below your means, not at or above your means. No matter how much I make, I want to make sure that I keep my lifestyle overhead low. We want to avoid lifestyle creep, which is where you start earning a little bit more money or you get a raise and then your lifestyle expenses start to increase right along with that. So it keeps us trapped in this endless cycle. We're constantly needing to make more because we're spending more and our lifestyle has increased. Instead, we wanna keep our lifestyle expenses lower. And then with that extra money that we've earned, we're able to save more or have a larger emergency fund for rainy days or situations that might come up, you never know. And then also you're able to invest more too with that extra money. There's so much more that we can still talk about on the topic of frugal living and even on this last one, number 30, living below our means, that could be a whole video in itself of tips and hacks. And I'm very curious how you guys like to save money. Let me know if you have any frugal living tips, leave them in the comments below. Don't keep them a secret, <laughs> share them with the rest of us so we can all learn from each other. I love reading through your guys' comments and thank you so much for being here. Take really good care of yourselves. I love you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.